summertime, um, the biggest challenge would probably be the Alaska State bird. That's a mosquito. Um, and they are unbelievably treacherous up there. <laughs> you can ask anybody. It's just horrible. Um, also, uh, wildlife, mm -hmm. moose, bear. You'll often run into those uh, kind of critters on the sites when you just, you're just working and you walk into a moose. Yeah. Or a bear will come, if you're working near a site that's a, near a river or whatnot during salmon season, a bear will just come, come check out what's right going down. on. Yeah, and uh, that's bad news. Yeah. So we actually, many times we're carrying loaded weapons out yeah. in the bush. Um, logistics in the bush is a big challenge for us as well. Um, we uh, find ourselves getting on a plane the size of one of those smart cars for two and uh, loading all our equipment on it and trying to land on a run strip that's shorter than my living room. So it's, <laughs> um, that's another good one. I've, as far as uh, that goes, I think Alaska bush pilots are probably the best pilots in the world yeah. per capita because they have to be. Yeah. If you meet an old bush pilot, that's got to fly with. If you meet the new guy, he's probably not a good idea. But many uh, villages, their only lifeline to the outside world medically is to use uh, broadband internet. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a doctor in Anchorage will be speaking to the nurse practitioner or the physician assistant in Savunga, yeah. and um, they have to walk them through the procedures if that person is not able to, to do that. Procedure. Yeah, yeah. There's a place in Alaska, like uh, a place called Scammon Bay, it's on the western edge. It really can see Russia from there. Uh -huh. um, the, uh, the hub for that network is serves 20 villages. And if that one particular tower has any issues, it's got to be addressed immediately. Yeah. The government subsidizes all this for the every, I forgot the term for it, but it's rural wireless is yeah, basically sure. what it is. Um, but it's super important to the communities out there, and that's where we end up doing most of our work is serving those small communities that may not have a a car. Yeah. Uh, we often get four-wheeler rides. You pay when they see the plane come in. They'll they start swarming. Then it's uh, whoever's whoever's the best deal on the four-wheeler <laughs> to get up to the site. It could be thirty dollars. It could be a hundred dollars. Yeah. It just depends yeah, on where you're at. Where you're at. Yeah. yeah. And, and we try to spend as much money in the local communities as well because it's not there's not a lot of jobs out there. Yeah. There's not a lot of things going on. Stay in the very nice hotels like the schools. Um, <laughs> that's the majority of the places we go. Or the hotel is the school. Uh -huh. And you work a deal out with the principal, and they'll provide you food and a shower and. When school's in session, if you're not able to work, you go hang out in the garage, which is really <laughs> exciting. Or, uh, I guess, walk around. Yeah. Um, go hunting. They let you. You can hunt out there at will. So that's kind of a neat thing. That that's kind of yeah. I guess yeah. It makes it easier. <clears throat> I often have to augment my crews with uh, folks from down south that I've met at these conventions, like yeah. Nate. Uh, this is the big networking for us, is because we get to meet the qualified guys who can come up and kind of we can pre-qualify them to come to Alaska. Yeah, because sure. Alaska is just such a harsh climate, and it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah. I've had. Many a folk come up and they just can't handle it. Yeah. The weather's too cold, the snow's too deep, and yeah. it's too dark. 